Welcome to Digital Asset News, or Dan for short. My name is Rob, and today, instead of talking about the news, I want to talk about what's going on right now in Celsius. And to, to help me make sense of this, because I get confused, especially with the fragmentation of what's going on with the Celsius procedure, Bank of the Future, the legal implications. So I brought on two people who have been covering this extensively. Uh, my man here, Aaron Bennett and Tiffany Fong. Thank you for guys for coming in. Hello. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. <laughs> Very so, excited. Yes, this is going to be good because, again, it's hard to keep things straight. I need help doing such things. I know people who are watching this video uh, are the same way. So also, as a remember, uh, you can find Aaron Bennett's channel uh, over on YouTube and Tiffany Fong. And her and Aaron's information are in the description. You can find follow them along. They've got some great information. And they're the ones that I watch to get the updated version of what's going on. So here's what we're going to go over just to uh, bring everybody up to speed. First things first, let's talk about the chapter 11 that was filed on July 13th or somewhere around there. And a quick recap to bring up to what's going on right now. Then we're gonna talk about how to check your account, when to file a claim and who actually has skin in the game as far as Celsius goes. Then we'll talk about the legal issues, grand jury subpoena, exclusivity and wasted money. Then we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of this. The Kelvin plan versus the Bank of the Future company or some other type of plan that could potentially make us creditors whole. And then uh, lastly, the options. What, how would you guys vote for this? The haircut versus Calvin versus Bank of the Future, which way would you go? And this is gonna be an ongoing discussion because let's be honest, nobody really has a concrete answer. So first things first, let's talk about it. Aaron, I'm gonna start with you, my man. Yeah. Bring us up to speed. I'll do my best. So. <laughs> Lot, lots have been going on every day. There's new news. So July, yes, July 13th, they officially declared bankruptcy, chapter 11. Right. And radio silence from then on out. It was a while before we actually heard anything after that. And a month prior, they had frozen withdrawals. So there's been a lot of just, you know, lack of communication. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've just been getting a dribble of information, a lot of which Tiffany is covering, a lot of leaks, a lot of right. sparse communication from Celsius management about, you know, here's the council, we've employed these people to help us. Oh, now we have this thing called the UCC, the Unsecured Creditors Committee. What is this? They actually represent us. I mean, essentially, everybody is getting a crash course in bankruptcy law, <laughs> peripherally. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm just along for the ride learning about it. And I mean, I could keep talking, but where we are now, it changes every day. Uh, mm -hmm. But a lot, we've made a lot of progress, I think, in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Uh, sure. Certain. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, and this, this just kind of brings it up to speed. So like we went through this, this whole process. Now we're trying to figure out who to believe, who to trust and where to go. And uh, thankfully, there's been some great information. Aaron, on your channel, you've really covered extensively what's going on. Also with Tiffany, with your channel, what, I mean, the things that are astounding to me, and this is leaked audio from actual uh, employees, uh, their meetings that they have. And yeah. it's just, and to me, like, it seems like it's a lot of hubris, a lot of pride, like yes. we're going to get out of this because of uh, this one individual. So just real quick, speak to that. Uh, how did this all come about? How'd you get this information? And what did it all kind of bring to light for you? Oh, I think it's delusional. I mean, I'm barely a YouTuber. I started my channel when Celsius shut withdrawals because I had quite a bit of money trapped in the platform. Um, and then I just started posting updates and I got contacted by an employee who said that he liked my channel and um, wanted to reach out to me. And um, he did begin, begin leaking me some information. Um, yeah. And I mean, it had been radio silent, so I wasn't even sure that I was going to post it. Um, but, and, and I was really scared of the repercussions in terms of oh, sure. lawyers and being sued. And many mm -hmm. lawyers strongly warned me not to leak anything. <laughs> but mm -hmm. as a creditor, I'm like, we don't know what's happening. It had been completely silent. And I have something where I, I see what they're working on, this Kelvin plan. So I was like, I, I, gotta, I gotta post it. So <laughs> um, yeah. I got gotcha. you. So yeah, I just want to say I'm glad you guys are doing the things you're doing because it helps out everybody, especially the ones that got things that are stuck in there. So great. Now let's 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 dig into it. Uh, I just want to bring everybody up to speed about how to check, you know, what your account has as far as Celsius. 
uh, when to file a claim, and who has skin in the game. So I just want to quickly show this. There's a link in the description, and it, it leads us to uh, Stretto. If you put in your email address here, you can see exactly what the scheduled claim would be when there's time to file a claim. So real quick, Aaron, talk to us, because you've already gone through this, this process. Talk to us, I mean, how simple it is, but what you found out. Absolutely. So part of what I'm doing on my YouTube station is is going through every single freaking Stretto document that comes through the uh, the portal. And and one of this and is exactly an easy way to check your claim. Uh, essentially, on the site that uh, was just shared, you would enter your email address, the email address that you filed uh, or that you used to set up your Celsius account. Mm -hmm. I believe it has to be case sensitive. So all lowercase from what I've been hearing. And yeah, they'll just send you exactly what should be on your phone inside of your Celsius wallet. Um, so if that is accurate, you really do not need to do anything. If it is inaccurate, like it shows you that you owe or it shows you that you have less crypto than you actually have, then you will file an official claim. And we may get to this later in the video, but I'll just share it now. Right now, as of this video, there is no link there is no proper way to file a claim. They have not released that yet. So if it's gotcha. inaccurate, you're just going to hang tight until myself or one of us, one of us three lets you know that it's live. So it'll be yeah. you. No, also, apparently, if it's disputed, unliquidated or contingent, then you might need to file a claim as well. But I haven't seen any people have that issue, but that's just what's listed on the Strata website. Gotcha. But. Yeah. So at least, well, at least people know know now to take a look at that and go, okay, this is correct. That's not correct. So when the information comes out, like, okay, I got to get on this. So everybody who's watched the video, make sure that you, again, link in the description, put your information in there, find out what is actually uh, for the balance. So you can say, no, 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 that's incorrect. Or that's correct. Just go forward. Okay. So then the next part is the whole thing with who has skin in the game. And I've had Alex on my show numerous times. And on one of those shows, uh, he explained explicitly who has skin in the game. I want everybody to take a listen to this and uh, just to tell me what you, uh, your thoughts are. And we'll, we'll show you a little bit more. I personally, I have over $100 million personally in the Celsius wallet sitting next to If you have money with us, it's sitting next to your money. If you have BTC, it's sitting right next to my BTC. You have USDC, it's sitting right next to my USDC. So, 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 so. there was a document that just was leaked, or not leaked, that was put out by, I think it was a Stretto. And you can see who the different holders are. And the top holder has got 47 million. I think that's Aaron. And then Simon Dixon is number 21 at 10 million. Alex is three, number 323. Thoughts on this one? Tiffany? I mean, Chrissy, zero dollars, appalling as usual, oh. not shocking. Um, yeah, Alex saying he has a hundred million. I mean, it's a bear market, but we're not down that bad. So, yeah, pretty bad. Pretty bad. So, we haven't talked yet about a lot of the leaked documents. About it's not even well. They are leaked by Stretto and leaked <laughs> by Kirkland and Ellis, showing withdrawals. So. Part of, part of what's happened is that the judge in this case wanted complete transparency. A little bit too much, in my opinion, where every creditor for the last three months, it shows their transactions or, or their withdrawals. Mm -hmm. Insiders, it shows an entire year. So how we're getting a lot of this information that is not looking good um, for a lot of the insiders is it shows withdrawals very close to uh, the bankruptcy petition date or when they froze withdrawals. So I don't know if we wanted to talk about that, but I just wanted to throw that in there that unlike Voyager, I know a lot of you guys watching possibly in Voyager, the judge did not release the same amount of information. And there's a, we basically all got doxxed in a certain way. So, Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's nope. pros and cons to it because obviously I feel like a lot was revealed from like being able to see the insiders withdrawals. It'd be nice if they just doxed the insiders. But I mean, if it had to be everyone or nobody, then I'm kind of glad that we can at least see their withdrawals. Yep. And that's so that is essentially what has been going on. And then to bring us all the way up to the present, there's another couple of things. First of all, grand jury subpoena, exclusivity and wasted money. Before I talk about exclusivity, who wants to take this one to describe what ex what the exclusivity is as it pertains to Celsius and the plan? 
Aaron, Tiffany? Aaron's, Aaron's an excellent describer. Aaron is excellent. Let's I'll, hear it. I'll give it a go. So from my understanding, um, Celsius had one or still has 120 days from the time of bankruptcy as the exclusive company or entity to file a restructuring plan. Okay. So there's been a lot of back and forth about submitting your claim or not claim, submitting your plan to the UCC. And right now the only company or the only entity that can do that is Celsius. Hmm. So that limits anybody else that has a plan about, Hey, this is how we want the chapter 11 restructuring to go to actually submit it um, because they can't exclusivity means they're mm. exclusively they're the only ones that can that can basically submit a claim or claim what am i saying submit yeah. a plan submit a plan so yeah. so real quick question then so if many if many wanted to they had a plan they want to submit a plan they can't even submit a plan yet until celsius does it first correct from my understanding People can submit, or I think Simon Dixon mentioned, mm -hmm. they can submit a plan to like the investment bankers, but it's a different process. It's honestly very confusing, but ultimately this exclusivity is here. A lot of people just want it gone because they realize that Celsius's plan, which was leaked by Tiffany in that audio, which we'll get to maybe, uh -huh. um, it's kind of bogus. It's kind of ridiculous. And uh, this exclusivity just makes it hard for anybody else, you know, for things to get moving along. Although the UCC did, as much as I dislike the Kelvin plan and find it completely unreasonable, the UCC did point out that if they were to end exclusivity too soon, then it would just open up the like floodgates for anyone to submit potentially bogus plans, and then uh, they would all have to be evaluated, and it could be a circus. Mm. I remember them using the word circus, so I wrote that down. But um, so there, there's some reason to not end it too early, but also obviously I. I'm not a fan of the Kelvin plan. So there's the pros and cons there. It's a good point because it becomes a circus, right? So yeah. then there was, there was just a little hearsay. Uh, Aaron, you said 120 days. Tiffany talked about a circus. And there was a question, was the extension granted? Apparently in uh, some kind of conference, the, they have not filed the extension yet. Celsius just stated in the three minutes. They, they will file for an extension. They, will, they want to keep going. And then to talk about the other legal issues, there is a uh, subpoena. U.S. grand jury subpoena uh, crypto or Celsius, the platform itself. And on top of that, as far as wasted money, this was put, put out by Tiffany, two and a half million dollars for an 18 day period from Kirkland and Ellis that cost another three weeks, almost two and a half million. Now, whose money is that that is paying for all this? Ours. <laughs> yeah, it is the okay. estate's money. But that is our deposited crypto. Okay. But then David yeah. Adler did clarify that that wasn't the total sum that was actually charged to Celsius. It was more like 3.1 million. And that is 80% that needs to be paid immediately, I guess. Ah, oh, that's the one you were talking about here. Okay. 80%. Yeah. But immediately, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So not Stretto like I was uh, complaining about. It is just uh, Kirkland that is the ones. Look. Uh, usually the only ones that win in a uh, lawsuit are the one, are the uh, lawyers. And that's usually how it goes. Gotcha. All right. So let's get into it. The plans, because we've, we brought ourselves here. We know there was chapter 11, you know, there's a lot of different fallouts. A lot of things have been going back and forth. I don't want to go over the minutia because really as Tiffany adequately says it is a circus. Let's talk about what the plans are. So people can start to think about this. Not that the plans are able to be voted on, but where things are going. So the first one, Tiffany, I'll start with you. This Kelvin plan, this is from Celsius, correct? Yes. So this was um, the initial audio that I posted that I received from an employee. Um, and it was the leaked all hands meeting where they were discussing the, Kelvin's, the Kelvin plan. Um, obviously, this was very early stage and was not meant to be publicly heard yet. Right. Um, but the gist of the plan and the premise would just be essentially that they want to reopen as a custodial platform um, with a zero trust security framework. And um, they also mentioned having uh, potentially multi-sig wallets, for example. Okay. Um, and their general business model or the way they generate revenue would be uh, transaction fees, essentially the same as everyone else, and a huge departure from how they used to tout the fact that they charge mm -hmm. no transaction fees. So that, was, mm -hmm. that would be a big departure. Um, but I guess technically less risky than what they were doing prior. But um, to me, 
Celsius and anything related to Celsius is it's a little, pretty, a little but, risky. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. So before we get to the bank, the future, what's the difference? So like when I take a look at, at different companies, I was thinking to myself, what's the competitive advantage? And like, you know, Warren Buffett will talk about build a moat around your business. Yeah. So what makes Kelvin unique to where it could compete in this market? To me, nothing. <laughs> I mean, that's why I'm just like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but if right. anyone else has a positive take on this, feel Aaron? free. Well, yeah, if, I, if I had to, if I had to argue oh. their side uh, from that leaked document, essentially they would be thinking of themselves as a startup again, but they have still a lot of customers, and they that's have. The Pardon. The existing, that's. I think that is the one thing: the existing customer base. But which I believe many? they said ninety percent, ninety-five percent may leave, but they're saying even if they only keep five percent of their customers, that's still a very hardy startup with. A management team already there that we can argue if they're competent and we want them to lead a company in the future but that would be their argument that they have assets you know they have mining that could possibly generate some revenue which we'll get to in simon's plan a little later they have gk8 which is their custody solution which is how they would actually uh, secure customer funds and cold storage using multi-sig and they can generate uh, revenue from customers locking up their funds like that or keeping their funds safe like that so that would be their argument. Their that... argument. Yeah. I mean, even if they were to, re to retain 10 to 15%, just this business model being much different than how they previously were saying they were generating profit, which it doesn't seem that they were even generating profit in the first place, but it seems a lot less risky, but just, just transaction fees. I don't know. I just, it doesn't seem like, I don't know. It doesn't seem <laughs> realistic to me. I mean, look, I, I could be wrong, but I kind of agree here. Unless there's something that I'm missing here, like it seems like the same thing. And then, the, Aaron, to your point about, you know, the, uh, well, we have 5%. If I would, I would say like this, me as a creditor, who's got a little bit of, of cash or crypto uh, tied up there, if they want to go out and do something else and start their own company and bring people along with them, great. Go ahead and do that. But for me, and I think a lot of people watching this video, I don't think they're going to trust the company to bring them any kind of revenue. It's, uh, it's amazing how trust dissipates so fast. It takes a, a lifetime to build a reputation, only seconds to really destroy it. And after that's gone, it's pretty yeah. tough uphill battle. So talking about that, let's get to that's this. Our financial company. I mean, in the audio, he was talking, he was comparing them to Apple, et cetera. And it was just like, this is not the same. Right. Yeah. Giving examples of other companies that have gone through chapter 11 bankruptcy, but oh, look, they've come back and they've come back stronger than ever. There was some airline company. I forgot which yeah, one. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's different. I yeah. mean, my example is like, you know, if this airline company was killing people, <laughs> they were crashing their planes. Nobody would ever go back to them, even if they came out of chapter 11. So yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but it was only a minor crash those last three times. Not a, yeah. not a major and crash. It, and it wasn't their fault. Yes. And granted, not to just completely rail on Kelvin. I mean, this was an early stage of the plan. It mm -hmm. could have evolved since then. And they've stopped holding all hands meetings. So even the employees that I'm personally in touch with, they don't really know if anything's changed. So it's mostly like the upper level execs that are aware of that. So maybe it's different now. Maybe they've yeah. changed things. But I just, um, if, if, since we have no further information, just to go based on what we have on Kelvin, uh, it doesn't look pretty to me. But. Yeah, so great, great segue. So let's get into what we do know about another plan. This is the one with uh, Simon Dixon and Bank of the Future. And it's a little bit more nuanced. And one of the things that I liked about this is Simon's already been through this. He talks about how he went through this with Bitfinex and the hack and how they put equity into it. One of the big things that stuck out with me in a recent video, because he's done a, a series of them, they said, look, he goes, to fill this gap, there's a couple of different ways to do it. But what we did is we gave equity into the company. People wanted to get out, they got out. And it's okay. That's, it's not for everybody. But the ones that stuck around, uh, the, the people that got out, they took a haircut. 50, 60, 70%, whatever else it was. But the people that stuck around, they 16 x their investment. Not to say that that's actually going to happen and not a financial advice. But I think on this channel, if you guys know what I talk about, is that patience is a virtue. So Aaron, real quick, talk to us about this plan that Simon has. Is this a good plan? I mean, it's, nothing's perfect, but uh, let's take a listen. Yeah, so nothing's perfect, but I think 
what we have in front of us in terms of plans that are being talked about, I would vote for it. Um, like you said, Simon has a track record of a very good track record. I mean, he's invested in a lot of amazing companies that have done incredibly well. He's personally incredibly wealthy from his investments. So I think his business sense is one that you just can't overlook in that sense. Yeah. And he's I got like, 10 million on the, on the, on the platform. Yeah, so, hey. 10 million. And he's like, he does, it seems like he doesn't even care. I mean, this guy is personally loaded. And that came from investing in startups like Kraken, blockchain.com. So him as a person, as an investor, I do respect a lot. So I can't imagine him leading us down a path that would just explode. You know, I, I think this guy knows what he's doing. And I do like what he's talking about. So essentially, with his plan, if it gets approved, and there's lots of steps to even get to that point, we're not even there yet to vote, which we'll get to a little later. Essentially, we would all get what he thinks now is around 47% of what we had on the platform. So that would be taking all the altcoins, which most of the crypto is actually in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a little bit in sell token, which he will deal with sell token as well. We would get, and here, there, we, there we have the chart, 47% in Bitcoin, 20% in ETH. Yeah. So his plan is to get out of chapter 11 as quickly as possible. By doing so, we would get Bitcoin and ETH and we would have that in an account where we could withdraw we could say you know what screw this i'm out and i never want to do with i never want to deal with crypto again yeah. but then but then we have a 3 billion dollar hole and this 3 billion dollar hole is what celsius owes us but they don't have so how do you fill that hole simon's idea is creating basically a venture capital fund which he can do with his company bank to the future Salt Lending, which he is probably going to acquire or partner with, and also using GK8, which is owned by us, the creditors, which Celsius purchased with our money, and create a VC fund that has cash flow businesses. And ultimately, the mining, for example, if we go into another bull market, which I think most of us do, uh, we want to be patient investors, we're, we're here for the long term, you know, just like Riot and Marathon, two other publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies, the valuation of those companies when they go public can be huge. And mining companies in the bull market do way better than even just holding spot Bitcoin. So that's his plan to fill the hole. You know, we don't have all the money to pay us now, but basically taking good, taking good uh, companies, yeah. putting them into a fund, we get equity and then we profit with an IPO. So, so, so here's, here's a, a thing to play devil's advocate, which is this, I know we want to talk about, you know, we like Simon and Simon's a good guy and everything else, but shoot, I got to, I'll be honest with you. Uh, when Alex on the show, I liked Alex. They seem like a decent person and then everything just kind of unravels. So let's take it like this. What if, <laughs> what if Celsius, cause they own those Bitcoin miners and they have only so many percentage up, up to speed. Could they do it? Could they take it and actually run with it and go, no, no, we've got it. Yeah. Do I, do I think Simon's the person and do I feel strongly pro his plan? I'm still skeptical of all of the plans out there. So I'm kind of taking a backseat on this one. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with trust. Right. And I think we would all agree that trust in the current management of Celsius is not there. So it's going to have to, whatever happens, it's going to have to be a new company, new name, new management. I think that's a, that's a given at this point, Definitely. if there's, if there's going to be any long-term success. So if Celsius wants to run it, but they call it a different name and they get a new management team, then maybe, but then it really wouldn't be Celsius anymore. So I don't yeah. think so. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to have to be something new. And part of the benefit of being in chapter 11 is that like unaccredited investors, which most people are in the US, they can actually get equity in a venture capital fund, which is what Simon wants to do, which I think is actually pretty cool. So for example, most people who are not accredited investors can't even get access to a VC fund, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of it's kind of interesting. No, I got to agree, agree with you guys on this one, because I think if it comes down to trust, then management. So yeah. like we talked about, like it's hard to, to put your weight behind Delta if all the planes are crashing. Yeah. And say, well, but we got the same team in place, but we got this, this new plan. Sometimes things don't work out that way. And it just, it just the, when the trust is gone for the, for the business and things like that, you have to just redo everything. So I think even though Celsius has it and they can, they could potentially do it, 
there was a massive mismanagement. There's a reason why Celsius, and I'll say it, and Voyager went out. There was a lot, there was mismanagement there. There was something that happened on various occasions that caused them to be where they're at. Now, take a look. People will say, oh, but it was this FUD campaign or it was, or it was this and that. Well, there's a reason why Coinbase is still operational. Binance is still around, seem to be doing okay. And a couple of other exchanges like KuCoin don't seem to have an issue. And they're actually even hiring in this bear market. So to say to them and go, well, let's just, let's just do this way. You can do that. I just won't vote for it. So yeah. any thoughts on that? But one? I, well, no, I, I absolutely agree. I think that, and I think that management, uh, new management, there's no question we need new management no matter what happens. Um, but we were talking about this briefly prior, mm -hmm. but I feel like my biggest questions were um, to Aaron, I guess if you want to re, re, touch on these again, but I was wondering um, if this haircut would be the same if we were to go with Simon's plan versus uh, having yeah. assets be auctioned off. I mean, just the assets auctioned off in kind um, to whatever buyer, right. hopefully in kind, and then we'd still get our crypto back. But would the haircut be the same for Simon's plan versus auctioning the assets off? Because to me, I mean, obviously to start a new company or any new co, you're going to require additional capital and mm -hmm. obviously time and labor, and you're going to have to pay the employees to work on whatever new company ends up being formed. So I'm just a little bit skeptical of any new co right now. I'm just kind of like, I don't want it to be any of my assets going towards a new company when I'm un unsure about the business model and like how successful they may be. Sure. So I was just wondering about the haircut differential between having our uh, assets auctioned off versus going with the new company or Simon's plan. Then that, that's a good question, but then do we know that yet? Cause yeah. we don't have, because of this exclusivity, mm -hmm. we can't really get things out. We don't really know per se. That's why I don't have a strong opinion on, on Simon's yet. I would, I'd want to know the numbers first. My understanding, and this could be completely wrong, if FTX purchased Celsius's assets, just like they did with Voyager, let's say they did the same thing. Yeah, right. Voyager was way more simple. There was no loans. They right. had no mining company. They had no GK8. They had no other businesses that they used our funds, like a hedge fund, to invest in, like what Celsius right. did. So it makes the chapter 11 process a lot more complicated. And from what I've heard from Simon, if FTX were to do the same thing they did with Voyager, but to Celsius's business, to Celsius's assets, it would not be good. So that's all I can say about that. FTX did, or uh, SBF did comment on one of Simon's posts and was like, it wouldn't be buying assets at pennies on the dollar. He'd be buying at market price. So I just to put that out there. Absolutely. And, yeah. I don't, I don't think, I think, they would be wanting the assets for, or they would be buying, you know, a, buying one Bitcoin for one Bitcoin, I believe. Yeah. And because I think that was a misconception that was going around that it would be like the sale of assets at pennies on the dollar. No, I don't, I don't believe that would happen. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, I think it's just co more complex. And the questions that I don't know that we'll hear more about is if FTX does, does want our assets, will they give us equity in whether FTX or how would we get equity in the mining company and GKA? Yeah. Like there's still these questions about See, how, like, are, how are we going to fill the hole? Because filling the hole is really what's most important. Yeah. And if we were to potentially gain equity in an existing company, whether it be FTX or Binance or whoever might buy it, then personally, and like if it was between Simon's plan and that potentially gaining equity in an existing company that is already successful, then I would personally go with that option but obviously that option isn't on the table and we're not sure yet um but that's just my personal take i'm also don't hate simon's plan or anything but i i would yeah. want to know more sure i guess that would be a good segue to this one which is uh what would you like to see ideally what would be the what would be the best case scenario and tiffany you kind of touched on that you know real quick but what's your best case what would you like to see ideally come out of this? Just to start any new company and have it be successful, I think is obviously difficult. So I'm just skeptical of like the success of any new company that we're kind of trying to scrap together out of like the ashes of what's left of Celsius. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that I'm skeptical of that. Um, so, I, I mean, if we could gain equity into an existing company, that would be cool, but that might be improbable. And obviously this is my first rodeo with bankruptcy. So I can't say what I think the probability would be, but that would be nice. Yeah. yeah nobody wants to go with their bankruptcy. Trust me. Yes. So, <laughs> no, Aaron, please forget. 
Exactly. Same yeah. thing with you. What do you want to see? What I want to see is people get liquidity and get crypto as quickly as possible. There's a lot of pain out there. There's a tremendous amount of pain out there that we've received many messages about. So what I want is people to get whatever Celsius has in liquid crypto assets right. back into our possession as quickly as possible, where we can withdraw it, sell it, do whatever we want with it. We want to get after, we want to get off, uh, out of Chapter 11 as quickly as possible. Uh, the longer we're in Chapter 11, the more we're paying these exorbitant prices to lawyers. Uh, and Simon's plan, like other plans, are the same. We want to get out of Chapter 11. We don't want to keep paying these people. And then third, a legit plan, ideally, to fill this $3 billion hole would be great. You know, we, taking just a haircut, I think, isn't the best option. I think there are ways that we could maybe fill the hole with equity. So that's what I want. Yeah, I got to go. I'll just kind of hybrid everything you guys said uh, for where I, I, I hope things would go. I would hope that we get some of our crypto back. I understand that we're all going to take a haircut at some point. And that's just how it is. And I think a new company would probably be the best bet. And then also, I mean, we got to get, I hate this. I'm not, I don't hate to say it. We got to get rid of that, that, the, the Celsius token because the way that I understand it, if you have a, a large amount of single holders with Celsius token, then they can just dump on us. And I know that the regulars are not going to want that. So I don't see how that plays into it. That has to go away. I know some people love it and they want to short squeeze it and all that stuff. That's not for, that's not for me. I think get, get, if we get a new company and we can bring it down that way and we're in for the long haul, me personally, this is me. And everybody has to make the decision. I would leave the funds that I have there. And everybody knows how much I have there now because thank you, Celsius, for doxing me. And I would leave it there to leave it in there for the long haul until the next bull run. Because I don't see a lot of, I never had, a, I never had the idea of like taking things out now anyhow. I was waiting until 2025, 2026. So if it stays in there, and like Simon was talking about, you know, for the Bitfinex next problem and 16 next, I'm cool with that. I'm great. And then just kind of work it from there to see what it becomes. The question is, how does it become that? And we'll only figure that out as time yeah. goes on. So anything, anything else that we missed, ladies and gentlemen, before we sign off? I think we just need more information on all the plans, but yeah, I, I think that's it. I think that's it. Well, I, again, I can't thank you guys enough for coming in on, uh, on a Sunday. This will be uh, pre recorded We'll release this hopefully soon. And uh, once we get more information, I'll, ha I'll have you guys back and we'll go from there. Again, don't forget Aaron Bennett, his channel, link in the description. Tiffany, her channel, link in the description. Go check those guys out to get the most up-to-date information because I can't bring everything to you. And that's it. So again, thank you guys for stopping by. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. So everybody, of course, like the video, thumbs up, subscribe with that good stuff. And that is it for today. Thanks for stopping by. See you on the next one.